Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today in this video, I'm going to talk about when Satan fell from heaven, and I'm gonna give you six reasons why I don't believe that he fell from heaven in the beginning. So if you stay tuned, we're gonna to go to the, uh, the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, look at the scripture right about the war in heaven, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Now it's very important that before you try to consider what is true, you have to first at least read the scripture. So we're going to read Revelation 12 chapter completely, and then we'll consider what the text says. Here we see, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, in pain to be delivered. And there was another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars from heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand, two hundred, and threescore days. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation, the 12th chapter, is the only scripture that actually references this war in heaven and Satan and his angels being cast out of heaven. And the reason why I say it's the only scripture is Isaiah, the 14th chapter, Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, and Luke, the 10th chapter, are all popular scriptures used uh, to teach this doctrine. Um, if you haven't seen them, I have videos all covering each one of those scriptures, and they'll show you how Satan is not referenced in any of them. It has nothing to do with Satan. So we ultimately just have this one scripture that now tells us there'll be a war in heaven. Not only is it not in our Bibles or in the Old Testament text, it's not a Jewish belief. So the Jews who accept the Old Testament and also Babylonian Talmud and different things, they don't have any belief that Satan has rebelled and he's been cast out of heaven and all his angels. This is a Christian belief because it was given to us by a Christian apostle. So what do they do with Isaiah 14? What do they do with Ezekiel 28? What do they do with Genesis? Where, how do they place that in Genesis? They don't, they don't have a belief like this. There's no Dead Sea Scrolls. There's no extra biblical text of any kind that supports this teaching. You can't find it in any writings of antiquity. What we have here is the Slavonic Book of Enoch, which even though I don't consider it to be a received text, let's at least consider what the text says. It says that one of these in the ranks of the angels, archangels, having turned away with the rank below him, entertained the impossible idea that he should make his throne higher than the clouds. And it says he was hurled down from the clouds, from the heights, from the heavens. So he was cast out of heaven, right? Now, the problem is this is placed on about the second day, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, the second day of creation. So... This is the Apocrypha of John, which is another non-received text, actually a Gnostic gospel, which contains the familiar story we know. But here, it does say that he wanted to place his seat above the stars and that he was cast to the earth. 
But this is after Adam is created. He doesn't want to bow and worship the image of God or Adam. So he says, I won't bow to the image of God. I won't worship him because I'm better than him. Well, this is after Adam is made. So even these two non-received texts, they don't agree with each other. They place it having different ideals, different reasons, and on different days altogether. So what do the Jews say? Did the Jews receive an idea like this? Or what do they view as far as Satan? So here on myjewishlearning.com, it actually points out the fact that the word Satan only appears in Torah twice. And it's not referring to a specific figure, but to an adversary or a person that acts like an adversary. So not an archangel, but just anyone that opposes, anyone that presents opposition. Now, in the rest of the Hebrew text, it actually does point to Satan as being a specific figure or the Satan. Uh, here referencing the book of uh, Zechariah and the book of Job, where he actually is an angel and he is known as the Satan. Here we have the difference between the Jewish and the Christian concepts of Satan. And it starts off here pointing out only Revelation, the 12th chapter, which is what we're looking at right now as being some story of this rebellious angel that was cast out of heaven. So he doesn't point to Luke, the 10th chapter. He doesn't point to Isaiah or Ezekiel talking about a war in heaven, just Revelation. And it says here that some of these Christian ideals are echoed in Jewish tradition, but some also point to fundamental differences, most notably, perhaps the idea that in the Hebrew Bible, at least, Satan is ultimately a subordinate to God, carrying out his purpose on earth, or that he isn't real at all, but merely a metaphor for sinful impulse. So he's pointing out that Jewish ideals do not believe that a Satan is a rebellious angel. It's either just any old adversary, but if there is the Satan, he's subordinate to God and he's just fulfilling his purpose. And I think we do see that narrative in Hebrew scripture, that he's obeying God, he's doing what he's told to do and what he's allowed to do, and that's it. But they don't have an idea that there's an angel named Satan or any name that rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven. The Jews don't have this idea. And they also question the idea saying that Satan is really just our fleshly impulse. It's really just evil in general. I'm not saying any of these necessarily are true or false. What I'm saying is that they do not hold this belief. They were the oracles of God. They were first given these mysteries of God, and they never once heard a story or believed a story or taught a story of a war in heaven in the beginning where an angel rebelled against God and was cast down never to return. Even uh, Josephus, the, the famous uh, Jewish and Roman historian, he didn't write about these things in his accounts. Um, and he wrote many, many things. It's actually what they call a Christian interpolation where the, the Christian sees this story of this war in heaven and then applies meaning to other scriptures like Isaiah and Ezekiel um, when that was never the case. So unfortunately, it's not only not in your Bible and it's not of any belief in, in, of any prophet or apostle, but it's actually only found in Gnostic Gospels, things that are not considered by anyone to be scripture. And Gnostic being uh, from the Gnostic, Gnostic movement and Gnosticism, which is actually a Luciferian doctrine, which actually calls Satan, who we call Satan, Lucifer, the light bringer. Um, and they worship him for bringing them truth and light. Uh, so this is definitely not a Christian idea. This is not a godly idea. This is not any of the sort. This is only found in false text. Um, other writings like the fall of the angels and the conflict Adam and Eve and Satan, which are not supported by any early Christians. Matter of fact, very few early church fathers even thought this view to be accurate. It actually didn't even take roots until much later using the, the term Lucifer and then things like, you know, Dante's book and other books actually paying this picture of Lucifer falling from heaven. Uh, so later we could have beliefs where we have this whole image. Here we have a big problem and that's a simple principle. If we say it happened in the beginning, then it should be in the beginning. It should be in the book of Genesis, if not somewhere in the Torah, somewhere in the Old Testament. It should be somewhere in the text, but it's not in Genesis. Now, like we already showed, there are what's known as pseudepigrapha, um, which are not authorized text or um, text that is not verified or received. So we do have texts that are not received text that somehow place this in the beginning. Again, not agreeing with each other. But from the Torah, one of the most prominent scripture of the beginning, of the law, of all these beliefs, it's nowhere to be found. Satan is not even mentioned in Genesis. So where do we get this belief from? Now I can look in the 
Christian Bible, the English Bible, we can look in the Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament. We can look at the Samaritan version of the Old Testament. We can look at the Masoretic version of the Old Testament, the Hebrew. None of these texts have this story. Josephus, in his account of Genesis, doesn't talk about a war in heaven. None of the Dead Sea Scrolls, when talking about Genesis or the beginning, talk about Satan and a war in heaven. It is not found in Joshua or Jubilees for that matter. The book of Enoch doesn't mention a war in heaven somehow in the beginning. So none of these texts, none of these texts where we find the Genesis account have I ever read where in the story of Genesis, in the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, nowhere in there do we see Satan ever referenced or a war in heaven and angels rebelling against God and being cast down. The narrative doesn't exist anywhere in these scriptures, which fundamentally, this is the first place you would find it if it were true. So my third reason is, uh, without trying to um, be definitive in placing a time of when this war in heaven and Satan being cast out actually takes place according to Revelation the 12th chapter, what I will say is look at the language in the scripture. Look at the things being said around it. It, it is saying that these things have taken place around or after the time uh, of birth and the death of Christ and the existence of what we call the church or the, the, the believers in Christ. So not only did the woman uh, bring forth the man-child, um, which is believed to be Christ, it says here he was cast into the earth. So now after the war in heaven, he's cast into the earth with his angels and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death. Now the word of their testimony was faith in Jesus Christ. So how do they overcome him by the blood of Christ and their belief in Christ? And then it mentions them being martyred, which we knew that they were martyred. This is what happened when he was cast to the earth. So this could not have happened in the beginning. So none of this, no matter where you place it within there, none of it places it either in the beginning. I also don't think it places it in some type of futurist view as that it will happen one day. I think it happens around the time of Christ and the apostles, but in no way does it place it in Genesis. Uh, in Revelation, the 12th chapter, it says that after this war in heaven, that Satan and his angels were cast down to the earth and their place would no more be found in heaven, that they would never be back in heaven again. So if this happens in Genesis, which is the beginning, before Adam, before all this, then how come when Job was being tested, in the book of Job, we see that the sons of God, uh, which are angels, when the sons of God came to the throne of God to pre present themselves and to meet with God, that Satan came also. He came also because he's an angel. Well, Satan means an adversary. So he is an angel that is an adversary to man. So he comes also and God says, have you considered my servant Job? So all this takes place and he comes and he tries Job and tests Job. But the purpose is, how is he in heaven again? If he was never to be allowed back in heaven again. So if, if you place the war in heaven all the way back in the beginning, well, what do you do with Job? What do you do with scriptures like that where he's back in heaven? Number five. My fifth reason is that after Satan and his angels are cast down, the dragon and, or the serpent or Satan, he comes down having great wrath, right? He makes war with the saints. And, and further down it says that he makes war with the remnant of the woman's seed. So when he comes down, he, he attacks the woman's seed. They that follow the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This was not in the beginning. You cannot place this in the beginning. Obviously from this verse, this is not in the beginning. And that segues into my sixth and final reason. And that's when he came down, like I just said, he makes war with the remnant in her seed. But what he actually does is he gives his power to the beast. Now, you may have different views on what the beast may be, but mine is simple. The beast is the papacy. And I ultimately have said that, look, the war in heaven and Satan falling has to take place sometime between Christ as we see in the beginning of the 12th chapter and sometime between that and papacy, which we see in the fourth or fifth centuries when papacy actually by name took place, um, but it began in the fourth century through you know, Constantine making Christianity the world, worldwide religion, the Roman religion, I'll say. So I do, I do believe that, that the papacy uh, is quite possibly the actual beast in which they make themselves God, um, they speak blasphemous things against God. And ultimately Satan comes down and gives them power. So this didn't happen in the beginning again. And if you don't say it's 
papacy. Let's say you think it's futurism. You say it's in the future. That the war in, war in heaven is yet to happen. It's going to happen way down the line sometime, you know, after the rapture and all these things, which also is untrue. But if that is your belief, how do you place the fall of Satan in the beginning? It's just biblically untrue. So in conclusion, the story of Satan or a rebellious angel being cast out of heaven in the beginning is found in no Genesis account whatsoever. Not the Hebrew, not, not the Samaritan version, not the Septuagint or the Greek version. It's not found in the historic uh, writings or account of Genesis by Josephus. It is not found in Joshua or Jubilees for that matter, which are not necessarily considered inspired, but they were received and known at least good for tradition in the past down stories. So none of these books that were received had ever accounted for this anywhere or even mentioned Satan in Genesis or in the beginning. It is important to note that the only place you find this story are in non-received text or in just straight out Gnostic Gospels, which are Luciferian Gospels. And like I said before, that it wasn't until uh, after the Revelation 12 story um, that it being a Christian interpolation that this, this idea came about. So this isn't a belief of antiquity. This isn't what our fathers believed. This isn't what, what was preached, what was taught, what was known. Satan was an adversary and he was a angel that was obedient to God. I do believe at some point, like we see in Revelation 12, that he rebels against God. Um, but where we place that in our Christian theology is altogether wrong. So I hope this was, was informative. If you like this, you know, please, you know, uh, comment if you have questions, if you feel differently, if you see something differently, if you know something I don't know, please comment and share. Um, if you like this, subscribe, you know, do all that good stuff, but I thank you for watching. Um, and if you haven't watched the other videos, which talk about all this teaching uh, in more depth, thank you.